in the world, and I'm putting it into your hands. And I'm telling you to be the head of this family like you're supposed to be. American Playhouse presents Danny Glover and Esther Roll in the first complete and original presentation of Lorraine Hansberry's masterpiece, A Raisin in the Sun. Tonight at 7, here on Channel 2. Today's broadcast schedule is brought to you in part by Minneapolis St. Paul Magazine. Enlightening, lively, colorful, and by the members of Channel 2. You're watching member-supported Twin Cities Public Television. KTCA-TV, St. Paul, Minneapolis, Channel 2. It takes two. Niblick of the Math Brigade. Hello, my shepherd, my big shepherd, little mom. Well, if I don't miss my guess, it's you, Mommy Dearest. Little shepherd, little shepherd, me. Oh, you have a question. Uh -huh. okay. okay, what is it? Could I make shepherd, little shepherd, me? How many phone calls do I think you made to me last year? That's the question? That's it. Okay, well, you call me about twice a day. There are 365 days in a year. Two calls a day for 365 days. That's a bit more than 700 calls. Right. You actually called me 739 times? Right. It's a right, it's a right, it's a right. Well, thank you, Mommy Dearest. I did make a close estimate, didn't I? I learned how to estimate on that terrific game show, Close Call. Well, I Yes, uh, you say they weren't close calls, they were long-distance calls? <laughs> You're a real joke cracker, Mommy Dearest. <laughs> oh, I wish she would remarry. <laughs> One night on a pizza shack delivery, I walked into a spooky house. And just as I was yelling to with anchovies, the door slammed and the lights went out. Started shouting, someone knows me, 1410. And then I heard a creepy voice. Oh, you'll never see the pizza shack again unless you make the proper choice. Probability, <laughs> don't you mess with me. Help me make the most of the chance. Might be win or lose, still I got to choose. Long as there's a ghost of a chance. There are four dusty bookcases right over there. One of them is a secret door. Go ahead and try one of them if you dare. Your chance is only one in four. Pull the third with all my might. Probability one four things low. But lucky thing, I got it right. <laughs> Probability, don't you mess with me. Help me make the most of a chance. Might be win or lose. Still, I got to choose. Long as there's a ghost of a chance. Walked into a hallway full of rattlesnakes. Only five are real ones, 45 are fakes. Chances five and fifty that I'm gonna croak. Chances are you thought this was a lock, a joke. Probability, <laughs> don't you mess with me. Help me make the most of a chance. Might be win or lose, still I got to choose. Long as there's a ghost of a chance. Found myself inside an old Egyptian tomb. Open up the 
Tommy Cage. Behold the seven keys he clutches in the gloom. Three will let you blow this play. <laughs> Three in seven chance to pick a key that fits. I pick one of the four that don't. But now the probability becomes three six. Three will work and three still won't. <laughs> 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 Son, you've earned your freedom here 12 ways out. 11 lead you to your truck. But what about the one in 12? My boy, don't pout. Good luck, here's your 14 bucks. Probability of 1 in 12 is slim. The guy was finally being nice. But that's the one he chose, and I'm so pleased for him. The pizza's for my older guys. Probability. <laughs> Don't you mess with me. Help me make the most of a chance. Might be win or lose. Still, I got to choose. Long as there's a ghost of a chance. Probability. There is an equal number of each color balloon. How many of them are blue? That's the question we asked the kids in our studio audience. The one who made the closest estimate will compete today on... Close Call! Yeah, that's right. I'm Reggie Cathy, and this is Close Call. And now, let me introduce to you the man who is always inflatable and never debatable, Mr. Arthur Howard. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Boy, Reg, you really know how to pur burst a fella's balloon there. <laughs> okay. Now, before Cynthia floats away, we better meet our contestants. And you are? Andrew McLeod. Andrew McLeod. And approximately how old are you? 11. 11. And you are? Zoe Haas. And how old are you? 12. 12. And? My name's Jermaine Isel. I'm 11 years old. You're 11. Well, welcome to the show. Now, before the show, we told everyone in the studio audience that there's an equal number of each color balloon. How many of the balloons are blue? Now, uh, we had some great estimates, and there was a tie. Uh, both Giovanna Corbo and Audrey Gomez estimated 55. So we had to ask them to draw out of a hat. So our fourth contestant is Giovanna Corbo. Would you take your stand here? Congratulations. Let her get by. Congratulations. Take your seat. Congratulations, Giovanna. You and Audrey both estimated 55. The actual number of blue balloons was 53. Very good. Cynthia, don't float away, but see you later. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Well done, Cynthia. OK, are the four of you ready for close call? OK, curtain, please. Oh, boy. OK, c come down here, everybody. Little boy, you really have a lot of appeal there. That's good. That's good. OK, here's our next question. How many bananas does it take to cover the surface of this tabletop? You have 10 seconds to write down your estimate. And just for a clue, for you at home, the diameter of the table is 48 inches. How many bananas does it take to cover the top of this table? OK, are you ready with the estimates? OK, what is yours? 47. 47, good. Andrew? 30. 30, OK, Zoe? 40. 40, close, okay. And 80. 80, okay. Now, the actual answer is, what is, oh, 135. And Giovanna, you come closest. Yeah. I'll see you later, little boy. Thanks a lot for coming. If you get work right, bye-bye. Okay, I'm going to move you over here. Okay. You are going to be in our finals. Okay. 
Now, to find out who Giovanna is going to be playing against, we have one more question. You ready for it? Okay. Are we ready back here? Okay. Let's see. The next problem. Oh, okay. There are, count them, one, two pieces of bread in that sandwich. You believe me? No tricks, right? Okay, curtain, please. How many pieces of bread are there in this sandwich? What kind of sandwich is that, Cynthia? Oh, it's bologna and cheese and lettuce and jelly on whole wheat. My favorite. Okay. How many pieces of bread are there in this huge sandwich? You have 10 seconds to write down your estimate. Okay. Time's up. Andrew? 77. 77. Zoe? 40. 40. And Jermaine? 50. 50. Now, the actual answer is 48. Jermaine, that was a great estimate. Congratulations. That's a very close call. <laughs> Thanks for the help. Okay, I'm going to put you all Now, you are our finalists. The winner of this round will be today's champ. Are you ready? Okay, here is the question. Now, before the show, we gave everyone over here pom-poms. Some of them are blue, and some of them are red. And the question is going to be, what percent of the pom-poms are blue? Now, over here, if I were to say to you that all of you got A plus, A plus in every test you've just taken, what would you do? Yeah! <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Now, just the uh, blue pom-poms, would you wave? Now, just the red pom-poms, the do rate. Okay, now everyone, one more time. A plus. Yeah! Okay. The question again is, what percent of the pom-poms are blue? What percent, I want a percent, of the pom-poms are blue? Well done. Okay. Jermaine? 95%. 95% and? 75%. 75%. The actual percentage is 76% are pom poms. Yeah. Very, very good. Congratulations. That was a great game. For our runners up, we have Square One TV sweatshirts. For our winner, we have a Square One TV sweater, which is very, very fresh, I'm told. And to everybody, thanks for coming. And see you next time on Close Call. Bye bye. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Mathman, your mission is to eat exactly the numbers for A that will make this inequality true. 20 is greater than A plus 5. When you encounter a number, you will have until the count of three to make your decision. And beware the groveling Mr. Glitch. He will eat you if you are wrong. Mathman, 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 Mathman. Buenos dias. 20 is more than 14 plus 5. Mathman, 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 Mathman. 20 is greater than A plus 5. Mathman, 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 Mathman. Yep, a shoe in. 20 is greater than 1.9 plus 5. <laughs> yeah! Mathman, 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 Mathman. 20 is greater than A plus 5. Mathman, 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 Mathman. <laughs> 19 looks good. Mathman, 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 the guy who sold me the storm windows, because if you are, I'm gonna... You're not? Who? Liberace, the piano player? Oh, oh, Fibonacci, the number player. What can I do for you, Fib? 
You found a distant relative's nose? Notes, I say, and what? You've come up with what? This seance? I'm not too interested in seances today. <laughs> oh, sequence. You have this kind of number sequence. Yeah. Yeah, okay, I'll write it down. One, one, two, three, five, eight, thirteen, twenty-one, thirty-four, fifty-five. Hey, fifth, fifth, <laughs> fifth fellow, I'm kind of getting sequence crap. What's the point of this move out? Do I see a pattern? No, I can't say that I do. Add the first two numbers together. Okay, one and one is two. That wasn't as much fun as I was hoping, Fib. What? Do I notice one? Huh? Each number in the sequence is got by adding the two numbers which precede it. Let me check it out. By the way, where are you calling from? Pisa in Italy? How's the tower? Still kind of leaning over, Fibbo? <laughs> Call you Leonardo Short. Hey, you know, look, I, I get what you're getting at. One and one is two. One and two is three. Two and three is five. Three and five is 18. Really moves along for a number sequence. Who thought of this? Not you, a distant relative, huh? Was something Leonardo of Pisa came up with in the 13th century? Ooh. What do you call this thing? The Fibonacci sequence. What's that? This is only the beginning? Yeah, I'll bet it is, Leo. Look, thanks for calling. Yeah, yeah, bye. Bye, yeah, bye, bye. Huh. Hmm. Yeah. Harry! I just got a call from Leo Fibonacci in Italy, and you know him. Yeah, that's the guy. The story you are about to see is a fib, but it's short. The names are made up, but the problems are real. It was Wednesday, 9.43 a.m., and high winds had blown smog, dirt, and debris throughout the city, leaving a scum around the L.A. basin. I was working the day watch out of MathNet. The boss is Thad Green. My partner is George Frankly. My name is Monday. I'm a mathematician. We had been involved in what we thought was an uncase. We visited a bright youngster named Walter Trepling who was sure the mansion he was taking care of was haunted. Then his ward, a parrot named Little Louie, disappeared. We decided to take a look at earlier scenes to get ourselves up to speed. You see, I tell myself there are no such things as ghosts. And you're right, Walter. But sometimes I don't believe myself. I don't stand a chance with a ghost like you. Well, Walter, all I can say about your ghost is... It sounds like... The wind. The wind. We felt good about allaying Walter's fears, but then we received a second call from him. He said both he and little Louie had heard the sounds again. Walter, we showed you yesterday. It was the wind. Yesterday, maybe it was the wind, but not tonight, I'm sure. How can you be sure? Because there's no wind. He's right. We investigated. found claimed to be a relative of Roscoe Fatty Tissue, the now deceased vaudeville comic who willed his house to little Louis the Parrot and his fortune to his young friend, Walter. We dismissed the man, Norman Tedge, with a warning. We're gonna let you go this time, Mr. Tedge, but don't show up around this neighborhood or you'll be looking down the barrel of a warrant for your arrest for trespassing. Now get out. Once again, we stamped closed on our case file only to receive yet another phone call from Walter. Walter Trepling again? None other. Another ghost? Worse. Missing person. Oh. Missing Avis, if you want to be specific. Little Louie has flown the coop. We were getting to know the drive to Little Louie's house like a paper route. Again, we questioned Walter Trepling. And when 
I came to feed him his breakfast, he was gone. And you looked all over the house? Everywhere. There's nothing unusual here, George. You sure? Just little Louis talent prints and some smudges that look to be Walter's. You asked Steve to dust for prints. When you're trying to solve a problem, you have to look at all possibilities, Kate. Walter, has little Louie ever disappeared before? Never for more than an hour or so at a time. Answer to that. You've got to give him straight lines. Straight lines? The setup lines for jokes, Miss Monday. Watch. Why did the parrot cross the road? If he's around and he hears the setup, he'll yell the punchline right back. Hey, little Louie, who was that lady I saw you with last night? Hey, little Louie, why does the fireman wear red suspenders? To keep his pants up. <laughs> where does this road go? Doesn't go anywhere. They keep it here to drive cars on. George. Skunks, what about the smell? George, you're supposed to let little Louie have the... They'll just have to live with it. Punch lines. Right, right. Sorry. Uh, Sam, Steve, join the search party. First cop say to the second cop. What did the Roford say to the salad? What time is it when an elephant steps on your watch? Time to get a new watch. George. George. Sorry. I'm afraid it's no use. Little Louie is missing. Maybe he'll come back. He's probably a homing parrot. Walter, what are those numbers little Louie used to recite? Uh, one, one, two, three. That's what I thought. One, one, two, three. One, one, two, three. One, one, two, three. Five, Eureka. One, one, two, three. Five, Eureka. One, one, two, three. Five, Eureka. There he is. There he is. There he is. You couldn't even see him there. Look at I know. It blends right in. He looks safe and healthy. Louie! <laughs> Welcome back, buddy. Mr. Frankly, what were you and Louie talking about? Yes, George, what are those numbers? The beginning of Fibonacci's number sequence. Of course. Fibonacci's? Fibonacci. He was an Italian mathematician who lived during the 13th century and had fun with numbers. The sequence is arrived at by adding the two previous numbers to get to the next number. That's right. We always start with two ones. One and one is two. One and two is three. Two and three is... Five, Eureka! What reminded me of it was this page I found in Fatty Tissue's will. Oh, gee, I forgot all about that. It was just another mathematical puzzle. The three of us used to do them all the time. Mr. Tissue loved mathematics. This one fits part of the Fibonacci sequence. See? One, one, two, three, five. You know something, Pard? The square pattern looks very familiar. I know what you mean, Ms. Monday. It looks just like that. It's an identical pattern. But you know something? Uh-huh. So what? in bad movies. I'm gonna give it to you like you gave it to my brother. He must have put his money in the safe. You wouldn't happen to know the combination of that safe, would you, Walter? No, I don't. One, one, two, three, five, Eureka! It's worth a try. Fibonacci, here I come.
A tape recorder. Mr. Tissue used them a lot. If you found this, Walter, I'm as happy as can be. Listen to little Louie, he can lead you to the key. Sounds like another puzzle. Remember what you just learned. Now don't turn up your noses. Look for number patterns and stop and smell the roses. Good luck. Told you Mr. Tissue was a puzzle lover. He sure is. A real kidder. Let's play this another time. If you found this, Walter, I'm as happy as can be. OK. Fatty knows if Walter is listening to the tape recording, he's obviously solved part of the puzzle. Listen to little Louie. He can lead you to the key. You're a big help. Remember what you just learned, and don't turn up your noses. What have we just learned? Fibonacci. Look for number patterns and stop and smell the roses. Good luck. The Fibonacci sequence is a number pattern. And stop and smell the roses means to slow down, take some time to appreciate life, and... George, let's go back to the office and puzzle about this puzzle. Look for number patterns. Hmm. Right, Kate. You think about it too, Walter. We'll be in touch. I think we can assume the money is somewhere on Fatty Tissue's property. Uh huh. He hardly ever went anywhere, so he must have kept it there. But where? Maybe there's another number sequence involved. Maybe. But right now, I can't think which one. Kate! Stop and smell the roses. Uh-huh. There were old rose bushes in front of Fatty Tissue's house. George. George, look. It's the Fibonacci sequence. One, one, two, three, five. The pattern is on the wall. Uh oh. Three, three, one, four, five, four. Kate, this isn't the pattern we're looking for. Maybe it's a different pattern. About him. Someone broke the lock on his cage. He's been bird napped. One hundred percent of Square One TV is a production of the Children's Television Workshop. This program was made possible by grants from the National Science Foundation. The Corporation for Public Broadcasting, the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation, the U.S. Department of Education, and the Carnegie Corporation of New York. On the next Wonderworks, a teenage boy assumes the blame for the death of his best friend. Joseph, look out! And seeks asylum in the New York subway. Don't you know that them punks was trying to get you to carry some drugs for him? Leave me alone. Look, I ain't always gonna be around when you get yourself in trouble, kid. Don't worry about me. Charles Dutton and Jasmine Guy in Runaway on the next Wonderworks. Great.